Hello guys and welcome back to McCallum Productions. Before we get this video on the way, we're so close to hitting 1000 subscribers, so it'd be greatly appreciated if you guys could hit that big red subscribe button, turn notifications on and enjoy the video. Right guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're joined by the lovely Amy Wu. How you doing Amy? Um, I'm doing good sir, I'm living my best life I can at the moment, eh? Happy old man right now, eh? Hi, no many more, no many more days to go, eh? Oh, you're so fun, eh? Anyway. You're so fun. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> so, uh, if we're just getting started off, uh, if you just want to introduce yourself for people that don't know you, if they don't know you by now. Uh, so, uh, my name's Amy Blue, um, I'm a singer-songwriter from Dunfermline, um, yeah, that's kind of best fits me. Kind of do like some kind of indie, kind of indie rock, indie glam, in glamorous indie rock kind of fits me best. We bit of killers influence there was that. Ah, <laughs> glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've just got down here. The um, first point to sort of go over was when you first got out. Uh, you started as like a solo acoustic act, uh, just going under your your full birth name. Um, so what was it that you got you into music uh, to start with? Yeah, like my, my dad and my granddad have like a proper weird, like eccentric taste of music. So I proper grew up listening to like what they were listening to. So it was a lot of like ocean colour scene, a lot of like stone roses, but then like completely different direction, like, like Kate Bush. Like who's mental? Like yeah, I just kind of grew up with like quite like an eclectic music background of just what my dad and my granddad were listening to and had on in the car. So yeah, uh, I've, I've always been into music, and I can't mind like a time where I wasn't. Do you know what I mean? It's just right, always yeah. been in there. Going up with you. <laughs> so uh, obviously, good influences there. Good big names there. Um, so when was it you started writing your own songs? Did you start off like covering these people that influenced you to start with? Aye, aye. So I always like started. I was always busking. Like I, I did busking for quite a while. Like when I was like fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, I was busking a lot. So and like playing like the pub scene and that. So like I've been playing like originals and like covers from from like fourteen, fifteen, and then I started kind of writing more when I was maybe about 15, 16. Um, and I grew up writing like lots of poetry and um, kind of like short stories and things like that. So it all just kind of came together and kind of writing, kind of writing everything really. Yeah. So would you say that that's like your kind of writing process, you'd do a bit of poetry then add the sort of back into it, yeah? I 100%, 100%. I think um, I'm more of a a words person over like music so right. the lyrics always come first so especially if I'm, I'm writing kind of poetry if something doesn't sit in a poem it'll sit in a song and if it doesn't sit in a song it'll find its home in like a poem yeah nice one so uh when you started bringing out your own stuff um obviously nowadays it's all digital format but um you used to bring it out on cds as well mm -hmm. um is that just Obviously, like when you were busking, you had yeah. a wee bit something to sell, make a wee bit more money, yeah. Yeah, I one hundred percent. I think, I think physical music is like still so so important because I think, especially when you're looking at like the digital platforms, there's there's no money, there's no yeah, money no. in digital. Like no, even for no. like ah, even for like bigger artists, there's 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 hardly any kind of money in it. So I think from a young age, I yeah. knew that. So I've always kind of tried to have an asset of having physical, you know, my music physically. And I think it's a really good feeling from like a writer's perspective and from a musician's perspective is to physically have your music. Yeah. Just as like I was saying, like a lot of a lot of bands and artists will like strive to have vinyl because mm. it's some that's your music. You can physically hold that. And I think I've always went in with that precedent that it's it's cool to have that, you know? Yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely agree with you. Um, like you're saying, it's always good to like kind of hold your your final version of what it is. Ah, exactly, like, exactly. He's like a child. child. Uh, <laughs> 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 Aye. But saying that, bring you you bringing out CDs and stuff. I I think like you're one of the few people that I know that still come out with CD format as well as digital. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm I think 
more people should do it and obviously i suppose it just comes down to cost that, yeah. that kind of puts people off would you say that's kind of the case yeah I, I think a lot of people think it's a lot more expensive than it actually is do you know what see see when i was first doing cds it's quite funny because i've come back to it when i was first doing cds i was burning them myself and then i was yeah. putting on the decals myself and you know there was no there was no cost in it and i went for a while for for, for not doing it and then for the, the the collected ep i've just brought out we went back and did that and i remembered how low cost it is there's like it's like 30 pounds to like get everything set up and then when yeah. you sell that on this is me giving away my fucking my business techniques <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know there's so much money and i think a lot of people look past how much how easy it is to do it yourself mm. and be diy and make that bit of money because it's yeah. it's easy definitely 100 mm -hmm. so uh like you were saying earlier, you've done bit busking when you first started it. Um, would you say that's kind of how you built up a sort of fan base, people like recognising you on the street and stuff yeah. like that? Yeah, I think busking gave me some like weird and wonderful experiences for busking. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. ah, there's some funny stories. I got booked, <laughs> actually, I got unintentionally booked for an Ann Summers party from busking. <laughs> 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 like, oh, that's an absolute story to tell, by the way. Oh, I, wow. It was so weird. It was so weird. Like, just playing this random woman comes up and she's like, oh, I've got, I've got a ladies party would you like to come and play some music at my ladies party? And I'm like, me being like 16, I'm like, oh, it's just a wee get together and you turn up and it's like, oh my God. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? Uh, that's like proper story time level, eh? But <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's unreal. That's quality. <laughs> that's brilliant. Uh, so have you got any more sort of yeah, um, adventure busking <laughs> stories or that. Uh, oh no, nah, this is just what the podcast is. Nah, is that <laughs> I had a couple of like weird men like buy my CD for twenty pounds and then really? <laughs> their number as well, and I was like, oh no. Uh, that money's good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your money. I just will take your number. <laughs> yeah, most of the time, I was like, I just give me your number and never texted back. But you got the twenty pounds out of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> so then, obviously, you've been on the busking scene for a wee while, doing a few gigs and that. Um, I had to dig through the archives to find this. Um, uh, I think you know what I'm going to say. Um, oh, no. Hollywood Holly Rocks final. How did that come about? That was so weird, man. That was, to be honest, actually looking back, it's just quite iconic. So it was like, <laughs> it was just so iconic. But the, the lineup now, see if you like, I'll look at the lineup of who was playing it now, and there's lots of artists who are still in it. So like, I don't know if you know like Gus Harrower. Yeah, uh, Gus mm. Gus Harrower was on it. Uh, Luna the Professor, who yeah. used to be the Vistas, they were on it. So it was a really like it was a really cool thing. So it was like battle. It was like a battle of the bands thing, but it was like it was the year of indie day. So it was when they were like pushing young people to vote. So they were like yeah. battle of the bands at Parliament. And do you know it was actually it was it was really good. Met Nicola Sturgeon, you know. It was, oh it was, <laughs> do you know, that, and from then on, me and Nicola, best friends, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, saying that, obviously you're, you're, oh, no. you, you, are quite, you are quite open with like, your political no. views, like, you, like, on your Facebook and that, like, obviously on your personal account, like, you don't, like, I, 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 to be fair, I think this is just, sums you up, but like, when you have a certain view, you're really strong on it, and yeah. I think everyone should be like that, but with you personally, I think that sort of just sums you up. Like as soon as you've got a view, you stick to it, and then you, yeah, like like you're saying, you you push it, and then get it out on your socials, and Hi. like it, it's your opinion at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So that's all that really matters. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think, especially like in the the times that we're in at the moment, like take take the coronavirus out the picture. Like even before that, you know, we're. Yeah. This is me just basically saying fuck the Tories. But, <laughs> uh, but, you know, we're living in such scary times, you know, and there's so much oppression 
in mm. the world, you know, and looking at it from someone that is marginalised, you know, we're living in such a, a mental world at the moment that I feel like I have an audience and I should share my opinions or I should highlight the things that, you know, are where there is oppression, that, that needs to be highlighted. And I think a lot of people who are maybe at that, the level that I'm at is like grassroots, still local band, kind yeah. of shy away from that. But yeah, I think, definitely. you know, I, I think it's like, I think it's so important to like, you know, introduce those views because we are in a very scary time for, for, within politics and within, you know, if you look at like Black, like, Black Lives Matter movement and everything that's still going on with, with homophobia and sexism and racism, you know, yeah. I, I think it's so important to bring that conversation into music or into yeah. art. You know, I think it's so, so important. I think more people need to feel comfortable talking about it. Yeah, I went on like, the right uh, spiel there, but you know. <laughs> no, no, I totally relate to it and, and to the sense that you should be pushing it in what motivates you. So like for you, yeah. like, so you've got music going through that. Like we recently put a post on our Instagram where we had uh, Donald Trump like on his phone. Like, I, I ah, drew it I out. It. Uh, but I, I saw it on Twitter and I was like, you know what? Like, you need to draw that because it's such a powerful image. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I just took that as inspiration. Um, but just in that sense, like, yeah, it's important to push that through whatever you're going to do, like your music, your art, Absolutely. any any uh, media that you're into. Absolutely. Like art. Absolutely. I think art and I think art is an amazing way to to push these things, you know, for the yeah, oppressed. Yeah, absolutely. If if you are oppressed or if you are highlighting oppression, I think art is an amazing way to explore that and to yeah. educate. I, mm. I think it's an, an amazing, you know, an amazing means to do that. Yeah, 100%. Definitely. Yeah. And I mean, I think it helps that you've got the platform that you do. Mm. That So you've got the platform that you do because of the music and the content that you create. But then when you're posting things that are obviously it's relevant, but at the same time, you're you're raising an issue like you're showing like that's like what's happening is wrong. Like there shouldn't be oppression at all for any like yeah. for any walk of life. But like mm. I think with the platform that you have, obviously it helps like so much to raise yeah. these issues mm, and to educate absolutely. people really. Absolutely, because I think for for the most part, my audience is, you know, for the most part is are young people who are maybe in the LGBT community or are allies to the LGBT community or are, you, you know, I've got an insanely diverse audience. And yeah. I think having that diverse audience, it makes these conversations really easy to have yeah. because everyone's very much on the same page. Uh -huh. and, I, and I love doing that with Amy Lou. I think music aside, you know, the music part is amazing, but. I, I love that part of Amy Lou it is being yeah. a, having that platform to to speak to so many people from so many different backgrounds who all have a, a really similar drive to 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 fight the shit in the world. Do you know what I mean? To fight yeah. the shit. <laughs> I've, never, I've, never really, yeah. I've never really looked at, into that sense because obviously you do have your music side of things but you've also mm -hmm. got your, your community. You've got like mm -hmm. I always forget that about artists or whoever. Like you do have a fan base, and you need to, it's important to stay in touch with them and get yeah. their views on it as well. Absolutely, yeah. My the, the Amy Lou fan base is a bit mental. Like we've got this um, Duffy, you're in the group. Ah, hey, oh, I'm in the group. Yeah, yeah. You're in the group. <laughs> you're in the group. Hey, I've got loads of different groups. I've got a group on Facebook, and I've got like a group on Instagram that is like it's almost like an invite only, or people no. just naturally join it. And it, it's good to like to keep engaged yeah. with the audience because I think mm. we're we're in a time where especially like things like Facebook, the natural reach is pish. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's really good to have things like that to to really engage with your audience and make sure you're staying in contact with your audience. Mm. You get subreddits in enough. <laughs> <laughs> subreddits. Oh my god. <laughs> Christ. But I suppose having, 
but I suppose having like groups like this, like it's always a chance for you to educate yourself as well. Like I know it sounds daft, like because obviously I'm not saying that you're uneducated in any <laughs> shape, <laughs> way, shape, or form. But I mean, like having like getting inside information and people's personal experiences, it, it just it educates you as well as others by uh, using these platforms. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I completely agree. Like, I've got fans, I've got a couple of fans who are in Germany and in, like, fans in America who are mm. in a group chat with girls from, like, Edinburgh who, mm. you know, they, they use this chat when I'm not in it and it's it's really good. Like, it, it feels quite really bittersweet that I've mm. created this community of, of, of young people, you know, from who are all again I come back to who are all fighting against the same shit but are from completely different walks of life yeah. and I, you know I, I love it you know I, I love being educated like educated is, a, a, is probably the right word to, to do it like I've learned so much from my audience you know yeah mm. ah, that's good like so uh... <laughs> <laughs> So uh, going back to obviously saying like when you have a strong when you've got an opinion like you it's like you preach it a lot like you use your platform and stuff but uh, I I sent you this prior to the call and um, to be fair you got yourself a wee bit of publicity ah, some, day, some but... bad names with your uh, song for Kezia Dugdale. Oh, no. Nah. Listen, I don't support Scottish Labour anymore, but <laughs> at the time, <laughs> <Not biased. laughs> when your fave is problematic in the past, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was really kind of weird. Like, I, I've always really strongly been into politics as well. And um, I think it was when Kezia was, you know, Kezia was, was a great Labour leader when she was there until she until she stepped down. But yeah, I just wrote a song about Kezia Dugdale because Kezia, um, Ke- Kezia is a gay woman, was what, probably one of the first like gay women that I saw in politics. Um, you know, which is which is a crazy thing, especially if you look at like if you look at British politics throughout the time, if you think of women in British co- co- politics, most of them have been cunts. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's <laughs> women in politics, you know, in the past, have, you know, have all been kind of cunty. But to see like women like Kezia Dugdale and now like Mary Black, I think seeing queer women in politics, I think I was maybe like fifteen when I wrote that, and I was like, oh my god, there's people like me being represented in Parliament, and yeah. I think that was really where that song came from was like oh my goodness there's someone like me yeah that could mean a lot like that exactly 100 yeah, yeah. 100%, 100%. but i got i packed up like a fair bit of trash and like it was a daily yeah. records and stuff was it yeah, there was quite a few other people yeah. as well as i know packed it up it was really weird, it was really weird. <laughs> i don't remember i think i was on like a I think I was on like a school trip or something like that because I think I was still in school I was maybe like fifth year sixth year and I was like away and like I'd post I like recorded it before I went away and then I posted it on my Facebook and I was getting like pure messages to like the Amy Lou account or what what is now the Amy Lou account and it was pure just like can we put this in the daily records and I was like I got then. then. (laughs) Man, I'm like did you ever think like it picked up like that that was trash trash, and like getting spotted by sort of yeah yeah it was proper weird i think it was it was one of those first kind of experiences of like people who weren't my pals like listening to my music right, even yeah. if it was like a, a piss take song about a politician do you know what i mean like it was it was really cool it was really cool um and it, it always randomly gets brought up <laughs> this is the first oh, time yeah. in a while it's been brought up so i'm really impressed Ah, digging deep into this, that me. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> but obviously, like, when I've been doing, like, I was doing my, my research. Um, obviously, you were heavily involved with like the first five prides. Like, mm-hmm. how did that make you feel? Like being asked to be involved in that, and obviously the journey that you've been on yeah. with it now. Yeah, one hundred percent. So five pride this year's and it's it's fourth year, 
and I've been involved with it since its first year and it's it's really grown a lot because I think I, I do a lot of stuff with with pride through Amy Wu and I do a lot of youth work on the side and you know you look at the likes of Edinburgh and Glasgow pride and they're extremely commercial they're very much for profit yeah. whereas Five Pride in Kirkcaldy you know it's it's very little funding behind it and it's extremely for the community yeah. and it's really one of a kind and it's the amazing people behind it as well um and i've I've played at it every year since the start and um it's an amazing community of people behind it as well um and it's just one of those things and every year i go there's this is going to sound quite no the way i would say is you, you go to edinburgh and glasgow pride and it's just people within the community but if you when you go to Fife Pride there's, there's so many people who aren't in the community there and enjoying it and yeah. you know almost being educated by it and I think that's mm. what's really special about Fife Pride yeah it's always a cracking lineup as well it's that has to be fair, fair. Yeah. <laughs> but I suppose it is important that like obviously you're saying about Edinburgh and Glasgow but I think like smaller places like Fife I think it is really important like that things like that happen across Scotland because like you say it yep. is it is it is can it really can be educational for a lot of people mm-hmm. yeah 100 because I think you look at the bigger cities like Edinburgh and Glasgow you know they're, they're already extremely diverse because you're in a city where like Fife you know especially if you're, you're going through like you know Fife's all like the ex-mining towns yeah and you know you, smaller you speak communities. yeah smaller yeah. communities who it sounds horrible when I say this you know, some of the communities the mindsets maybe aren't as open but it's yeah. doing things like this that there is that education and that's not just like a gay thing you know that that's anything you know whether you're looking at you know whether it's a race conversation or a gender conversation you, you find in smaller places there maybe isn't as much open-mindedness but doing things like this in the community is, yeah. is how you get there it's, it's a stepping stone step forward. yeah 100 yeah, percent Definitely. Right, that's good. That's good to hear that though. That it is ah, ah. that people are coming that aren't involved in the community just like mm-hmm. purely for educational purposes. But I mean ah. like obviously going back to the platform that you've got, like Instagram and like Twitter and things like that, like mm-hmm. obviously you post your your views and like your personal sort of well, struggles because I was trying to think of another word, but I mean really that's what it is. It is a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> But no, you get, you've got to be thick-skinned to be able to put up with it because there will be people that disagree with you as well. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just a reality in life. Eh? Yeah. I, but it's good that you get through it. I, 100%. I think the sooner that, you know, you notice that potentially you are maybe a wee bit different, you, you kind of need to accept that you're not everybody's going to, not everybody's going to love it. And the yeah. sooner that you, you know that, the easier it is that when that does pop up when it eventually does and that's with any form of art it's it's easier to take it because mm. you know that not everybody's gonna love your art that you love you know yeah. what i mean yeah, yeah definitely i mean that's the thing though like nothing comes like being it like i think i think yeah you put something up on your uh instagram the other day that was something about uh what was it it was like changes weren't made through being silent like you need to be vocal <laughs> about these things yeah. like, you need to like social media is a good thing and a bad thing but i mean a lot a lot of times like and more recently as well i've been i've seen it being used for good yeah and i think like that's crucial for things like like pride and like black lives matter and like all these people that are supporting the cause of people that have been oppressed and i think like that's like obviously you're saying about sort of smaller villages within fife having quite a closed mindset but yeah. I think with social media, that can be like, like you're saying, a stepping stone as well. Yeah. To open people's minds and let them be educated about these sort of topics, really. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I think social media is probably the the most crucial tool for for activists of today. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's it's great to to get that message, you know, out like that. And like you said, like obviously, you know, I put it out myself is change. Change has never come from silence. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. the changes that we are seeing today 
you know we can you know we can talk about that and we can push that through like social media and all that jazz <laughs> so uh like i was saying social media can be a good thing and a bad thing and um oh, oh, oh. I can what's coming. Yeah. I can what's coming. Uh, it was getting brought up, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, is that it? It had to be, it had to be. Uh, was, it, was, no, it, was, it was a year ago last month, was it not, that it happened? Uh, it, it was a year ago last week, too. Hey. Oh, yeah. oh. The, the truth about Amy Lou. The um, truth. There's a Bible behind it. Was, <laughs> uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I think things like review pages and stuff like that can be really good forms of like sort of advertisement for whether it's musicians or artists or whatever, like at the end of the day you're getting exposure in a good way but then obviously in this case they were, they weren't really exposing your artwork, they were just, they were trying to have a dig at you I feel. Yeah, I mean, I got amazing social media engagement after that. So like, <laughs> well, yeah. I'll just sing some of it tonight. That sings some of it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a weird time. It was a really, really weird time. Um, I, I think we, me and my friends, you know, we were we were all talk, we were talking about it the other day, and like people, the, the people who the team of Baby Lou, they're also really good friends of mine we were talking about truth the other day and we were like that is so mental that that was a year ago yeah. um but it was just so weird i think at the time i now think it's absolutely hilarious yeah, like, yeah. on the birthday of it i like got it up and i was like giving my pals a dramatic reading <laughs> <laughs> performing it as a monologue do you know what i mean <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but yeah it was, i just remember reading it and i was like i think Every time I read it, I find something that I find even funnier. So my yeah. personal favourite line is like, massive lesbian. And I'm like, I should make merch out of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got to embrace it, don't you? Yeah. Like, you can definitely make that a selling point. <laughs> yeah, I 100%, 100%. And it was one of those things, we played, um, I played Expo North, like the week, I mean, it was about two, two, three weeks after the truth post last year and so expo North is really good because it's like bands um loads of like um grassroots like local bands going and showcasing at this and it was really funny because we were it was maybe like one o'clock in the morning and it was me and members from like bands from like dundee and like dumfries and they were like, oh my God, it's Amy Lou. It's truth, Amy Lou. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it's me. Um, but do you know what I mean? It was one of those things, but I, I, I just laugh at it now because it's not, there's no point in, in being upset about these type of things. I think yeah. at the time, I think it made me stronger than all of us. <laughs> and I think, yeah, and I think after that, I think I made a point of it to, to talk more mm, about yeah. the issues of, of being a gay woman in music because I think a lot of people will will pit a lot of people and this isn't just a gay thing this is you know this is a universal thing people look at you and people find something out about you they'll pigeonhole your music yeah. they'll, they'll find something out about you and they'll know what your music sounds like before they listen to you if that means it's like the, the the judging a book by its cover and I think yeah. I've I've taken that on the nose and ever since I, I, I don't shy away hmm. from from talk as we were saying I don't shy away from from talking about issues anymore yeah. because yeah. It, it's who I am there's no point in in hiding that that's when it just gets there's no harm in it. and it gets a bit pish yeah <laughs> so would you say at the time like obviously you're saying now like you don't see the point in dwelling on it because like it is who you are but like at the time would you say that like it did affect you, like. Yeah, I, I think at the, at the time it made me really kind of doubt. I don't think it made me doubt doing Amy Lou at all because I think I've got to the point now where, where Amy Lou is a massive part of who I am, like doing music as Amy Lou. But mm. I think at the time it made me kind of question whether I should be talking about being gay through music. It made me question it, which is daft because the landscape that we live in is although it's a bit weird at the moment and there's always oppression but I think the landscape that we're we're moving in now we're moving towards acceptance I think at the time I was just a bit iffy about 
talking about being gay in music. Right. I think after be. that. Yeah. yeah, I think absolutely. I think if anyone highlights anything, it it makes you suddenly conscience, conscious mm. of that difference. And I yeah. think I did feel like that for a while, but tis what it realize. is. Yeah, yeah after, over time you, you yeah. start to, yeah. But I mean, it got, it got quite a, like a big reaction. Like, obviously, everyone was highlighting it, saying how like like out of order it was. But I mean, <laughs> I think that's like people are being more inclusive now, and I think maybe that's that could have helped you. I don't know if I'm kind of making assumptions there, but would you say it was? Yeah, I, I think it was. It was really nice seeing a lot of people support it especially on a local on a local music scene kind yeah. of point of view i think it was really nice reading people's like statuses like duffy i, rem I remember like you you goodness me my fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> let's try it's that like again technical, diffi <laughs> technical difficulties <laughs> but yeah duffy like i remember like your post about it and, you know like your post and like jordy's post and like yeah. dobs post it was really refreshing seeing people that I, I, obviously I hadn't maybe really spoken to a lot kind of share it with that kind of thought of what is going on like this isn't acceptable and I think yeah there was a silver lining in it in almost seeing a lot of people support it because I think in the back of my mind I was like oh fuck people are just gonna like laugh react about this and just like talk about it amongst themselves mm -hmm. and no one's gonna really say anything but the positive was that people were talking about it and swings and roundabouts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think uh, after that, I think the page kind of died a death because I think everyone had their assumptions as to who yeah. was involved. And I mean, I just, you can look, you look at it now, like, who, <laughs> who got the last laugh? Like, yeah. Amy Lou, the, the brand Amy Lou is going stronger than it ever was, in my opinion, anyway. But I mean, mm -hmm. So, yeah. and you've profited from it. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think since that point, you know, I've come on, le I've come on leaps and bounds since that point. So, yeah, I, I think if anything, it pushed me to be, be more, even more genuine as an artist that I am. So, I suppose, yeah, I think it, really, I think it did push me more as an artist, pushing my my views as well. So it was like monetizing, monetizing yeah. the hate. Yeah. <laughs> Making a good situation out of a bad one. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, uh, over your time, obviously, you started out as like a, a solo artist. Um, then, obviously, you've got a backing band, a backing band behind you. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's gone through a few changes um, and a few name changes as well. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, your message hasn't changed from the start. I wouldn't say. Would you agree with that? Yeah, 100%. I think the name changes were kind of coming as, I think, even till last year, I was still trying to work out what my sound was. And there was a while where I was thinking of maybe just making it into a band. And then in, in, in the end, I decided to, to keep it as a solo project with session musicians, you know, who form my backing band. Um, but yeah, like it, it was, it was Amy Louise Rogers and it was Amy Lou when I was solo. And then kind of my first experience of getting a backing band was Amy Lou and the Marine Biologists, which yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think about that name so much and it, it gives me nightmares. Um, and then it, it was Amy Lou again for a while and it was Amy Lou and the Monday Club and then it just kind of evolved where my backing band was always changing. It was loads of different like session musicians who were getting involved over time. It's where I just kind of was like, okay, I should just keep this as a project as Amy Lou. But it was it was a na a really natural kind of evolution over time. Looks yeah. like the Food Fighters, man. <laughs> <laughs> Going through about like fifty right, million exactly. changes. <laughs> right, but mine's was in the space of like eight months, <laughs> <laughs> like eight months. <laughs> Shorter version. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. But I can I can remember. Um, was it a gig in Edinburgh that you were? I think it was you were playing at Sneaky Peaks actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was when you were like under the name of the Monday Club, and I think would you say it was around about that time that you found the sound that you've got now that you're kind of sticking with? 
yeah yeah kind of like really like kind of the indie rock sound um because like I, I went from like folk to then like I don't know why I wrote, wrote folk because I didn't grow up listening to folk I grew up listening to like the Stone Roses which is like indie rock do you know what I mean yeah, listen to yeah. pulp and stone roses so like over time like I've naturally come back to that and I think the sound that I'm writing in is, is still changing you know right now I'm, I'm I'm writing a new record that there is aspects of indie rock there's a lot of, it's mostly indie rock but there's aspects of of more just singer songwriter and kind of like the the, the grungy 90s singer songwriter acoustic lo-fi sound in there as well so it's it's ever changing i think i've learned not to to pigeonhole myself to a genre because mm. it's, it's more fun not to yeah, yeah. so uh, earlier we were saying you've got a like a good team around you um obviously your pals but um mm-hmm. You've got, a, you've got a really good PR team. You've got you've, yeah. you've managed to land yourself two dedicated photographers. Most bands mm-hmm. struggle to find one. Like, <laughs> Ken. Talk about, like Ken. Well, you know the, the girls who do my photo my photography. They were actually they were fans first, which is literally the story of my whole team is a bit insane. Um, so my photographers were originally fans. Um, who had been listening to me since I was a solo artist and I was playing with um, Indigo Velvet, RIP, great band, <laughs> um, no longer with us though. I was playing with them at, at, um, King, uh, at King Tut's in 2019. I think Moonlight Zoo were on that lineup as well and Chris Gregg and the Merchants. What a wacky lineup. All <laughs> class bands. It was such a diverse lineup. Um, I was playing with them and, and that's when I met Kaylee and Lorna. And they've been on and well for a while they were on and off doing photos and then they kind of just became part of the, the Amy Lou team. And then Kaylee went to school with my managers, and it was Kaylee who introduced my music to them. So yeah, so now and then Scott, who's my bassist, went to uni with one of my managers, Chloe. So it's like the team is is crazy because we all oh, just well. kind of yeah, it's, it, it's crazy how it works out. It's crazy yeah. how it works out. And it's more like, it, like it is a team, 100%. It's one of a team, but we're like also a friendship group, yeah. which, it, which is really nice. It's, it's really nice having that open and honest relationship with my team. Do you know what I mean? It's class. Yeah, yeah. I think that's ideal though, isn't it? Though? Like, yeah. you want, like, you want to get on 100% with the people that you've got around you. But I mean, like, yeah. I, I just like Mikhail saying it's a small world. Like the team's grown arms and legs, but yet everyone somehow knows everyone each other. Everyone knows each other. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. I think a lot of a lot of up and coming bands are like really. Uh, I think in in today's age, a lot of like up and coming bands really want to like maybe get a manager, want to get a dedicated team, but sometimes that team can be people you went to uni with. Do you know what I mean? Like my, that whole team is I've known Scott who plays bass for me for years but Scott also records all my music and um, Scott's like is my bassist but he also records like all the tunes like he's been like involved in all of the songs in in some shape or form so like and I've been friends with him and like I said my, my team it's a lot of people will when they're when they're coming through music you know they want that kind of management who's maybe worked with thousands of people or thousands of big names but sometimes like the best team can be a team of like your pals yeah. yeah exactly exactly and I, I i love it i wouldn't change my team for the world do you know it's a absolute squad <laughs> <laughs> but uh I, obviously you've got like a good team around you but um would you say that's helped with some of the sort of the big gigs that you've managed to get yourself would you say that having them involved is helping yeah. Away. yeah 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 i would 100 percent say i mean for for a while even even when the team started to get involved it was still me doing like a lot of the booking and stuff like that mm-hmm. but having just extra voice because for a while it was just me screaming about amy lou and like everything i was doing with amy lou it really helps to have you know other voices screaming the same message and it's it's good you know my team are absolute 
first class, do you know what I mean? And like I said, the majority, well, all of my team were fans mm. originally. And, and that's, I think that is the best thing. One of the best things about my team is that they are so passionate, you know, about what I'm doing with Amy Lou. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And I, it makes it easier. It makes it easier because it sounds a bit daft, especially when I'm like pushing like new content. They can they're seeing it from the perspective of a music yeah. consumer rather than answer, just yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. So they can, you know, they're you know my whole team are big lovers of like grassroots music. You know, mm. they're they're discovering artists like local to Dunfermline, but even local bands down south, you know, that mm. under a thousand monthly listeners on Spotify kind uh. of kind of group so you know they they're really good because they see it from a music consumer's perspective as well Jank's great you know you're you're pushing what people actual real people who listen to real music actually yeah. want and i think that's really class yeah you need to push you need to push for an amateur spotify where you've got like Ken. under a under thousand listens and stuff aye, <laughs> aye, <laughs> just exactly. invest, like. aye, aye, there needs to be some form of next like, website platform for that. <laughs> aye. Uh, um, we can start that, Duffy. Get <laughs> uh, can pick up, can pick up where my, Mr. Graham Booth left off. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, He's I, was a legend. I was gutted by him. I was gutted by him as we do it at uh, Westside Radio. I was gutted, man. Ah, see What's, when I found out. He's a legend. Like, I thought, man. He was so good. See, see when it was like, like my band and that. Like, he was so good with us. Like, he was always like trying to get us like into the like the studio. And like do stuff and well, studio the, the, the wee room, like and get in and like do a just session. Box and, <laughs> and, oh, like just literally, it was like literally like a wee box room, and it was like right. mm-hmm. just just chat, right. play some music, yeah. and have a good time. But like right. the amount of times he tried to get us in, and then if we couldn't get in, he'd be like constantly putting our music on when he was in. And I'm sure right. it's the same with you, like because obviously. We've got Donald as well, who's really good with that. Like, just everyone that's involved with that is like, mm-hmm. like you're saying, is for the grassroots as well as playing sort of like the bigger names. Aye, yeah. aye. 100%. I think Radio West Fife is like such a great asset to Fife. Mm. I mean, with Donald and Graham, you know, Donald was one of the first people, Mr. Donald J. Mackin was like one of the first people to like pick up my music, you know, who wasn't in that friends and family bracket yeah. and actually mm. like, pushed me and you know Graham was exactly the same and I was I think I was like the last act to play be- in there before Corona so like well actually no it was Gentleman Jackals but they played with Donald but I played with Graham so like yeah. things went round about that's again. some title that the way some title aye the <laughs> last ever guest appearance with Graham <laughs> Booth eh? man what's, but, yeah. what's he up to now did he again what he's like he's got towards? Ah, he's got like a mad, he's got a mad job where he works mad, mad hours, but, mm. you know, he, he's, I, I really hope that he like picks up and does more music stuff, because yeah. he's got like such a great influence, you know, and yeah. um, like I, I've got a lot of friends who, through Amy Lou's stuff that, that I'm pals with, like you, Declan, you'll probably know her, like Katie Guffrey, does right, like underground yeah. sounds, yeah. you know, and Craig Wears, you know, guys yeah. like that who do radio plug-in for their own acts, like, mm. guys like Graham and Donald are like on the top of my list for them to like send their acts to, because they're, they're brilliant, you know, they love real music and they push, you know, bands, especially, I mean, you look at Graham and Donald have got quite different music tastes, but they push yeah. acts local bands you know yeah. i come back to that local bands mm. you know they push local bands across the country you know what i mean yes. i think it's the best thing class, for it yeah. ah 100 100 i radio waste five the wee box room in the hospital <laughs> class absolute class those were the days ah those were the days when we could uh, just go outside <laughs> Oh, go outside and just non There's a part where I'm asking. Oh, Ken, Ken, I don't think the, the mics in Radio West 5 would pick you up for two metres. <laughs> we'd have to get a wee expansion on that room. Yeah. Ken, you know we actually, we can't even mention the Rona because you get demonetised. The actual? <laughs> yeah, I, the I actual. didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah, so like you can't say <laughs> the virus because... Miss like, Yeah, you can say that, but you can't say the official name. 
Otherwise, you, yeah. So please, I'll put it. I'll end it. No, this is what you should do. This is what you should I don't, do. Like, I don't, I'm just I'm gonna busy. say, all right, I'll just say. Miss Rona, and then every <laughs> other time that we've all said coronavirus, you could just put Miss yeah. Rona. Just use that as a sample. <laughs> like censored. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a pain to edit. Like, I'm going to have to sit and watch the whole thing. If we can It'll point be out worth coronavirus. It. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be so, so worth it. <laughs> Content. <laughs> <laughs> just do the highlights. You'll put that off on Instagram or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Num- number um, count. <laughs> Take a shot every time, Miss Rona. <laughs> <laughs> Amy Lou McCallum drinking challenge. <laughs> I think that's a it's a good step to go into the next topic. Like obviously, yeah. like going into lockdown and that. Yeah. Has it affected you in the way you make music and you record? Obviously, it has. But how has it done it yeah. in that way? How hard has it been? Yeah, it's. Do you know what? It's it's been quite. N- for lack of a better term, it's been actually quite refreshing because before when I was doing like solo stuff, like I was doing a lot of like self-recording, even mm. though at the time it was absolute shambles. <laughs> I yeah. listen back to the stuff that I was like self-recording at like 15, 16 and we all would do, we listen back to it and I'm like, yeah. oh my God, that's shite. And then oh, you go yeah. into the, you go into the studio when you like actually start like taking your music seriously mm. and see so coming back to like self-recording, it's been it's been educational it's been a process yeah. but you know it's it's been really it's been really good so like me and as i say scott who's my bassist he's had his hands on every pretty much every record that i've put out with at, in the new kind of loose so from like shania onwards he's yeah. had his hands on it in some kind of shape or form mm-hmm. so like it's been so we've been like recording remotely and it's been pretty good because he's pretty much got the Eggman set up in his wee garage and his wee shack. Ah, right. yeah. So like it, it's we, pretty we good. We sadly don't have the privilege yet, but if you keep watching oh. it, we'll get it. We'll get it. <laughs> yeah, we'll get it. Get it. <laughs> Aye, nah, but it's, it's been good. It's kind of it's been a it's been an educational process. Do you know what I mean? It's it's. Aye, it's been a lot of like pure like throwing shit about because I'm like I can't understand this. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm right into Garage Band, Logic, that can mm. go away. That's too <laughs> difficult. <laughs> but no, it's it's been great. I'm from like a creative perspective, you know. It's just it's finding new ways to do things because like who knows yeah. like when I'm gonna have the luxury of of going into a recording studio again. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. so. You know, I've j- I've just got to to run with it for now. Mm. That is what it is. Okay, just like the whole situation behind it, it there is pros and cons to it because obviously you do have that that moment that you can step back and just mm-hmm. take in what's actually been happening in in recent times and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's, it is important going back to where you, where you began before lockdown yeah. as well. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, exactly. It's like it's a learning curve, and I mm. think it's completely. I mean, it already is changing the music industry. I yeah. think, you know, the music industry, the music industry, and the hospitality industry. I think those two industries are going to be the two of the industries that are going to change the most. I think everything's going to change. I Obviously. think yeah. the the I think the music industry is really going to change. I think it's for the better, I don't know. I was going to say, I was just about yeah. to ask you, do you think for the better or for the good? Yeah, but. I don't know. Like, I think, see, within this, I think I've been able to connect with bands like, from all over. Like, I, yeah. I'm I'm really good friends with a band in the Isle of Man. And do you know right, what I mean? Right. Like, I, I've never met them. It's mm. a band called Voodoo Bandits. And um, Cardo are playing with them at the oh, end really? of the year. Yeah. Sorry to use. <laughs> Shout out to Cardo. Shout out to Voodoo Bandits. Um, but, you know, it, it's been really good to, like, just talk with other bands because mm. what else is there to do? Yeah. I mean, like, this, and it's, it's been really good, like, talking to other bands. And I've heard, like, so many demos from so many bands. And we've just been sharing demos about in the music. I think the music that's going to come out of this time. Yeah. Is going to be amazing. I think it's yeah, going to be definitely a pro. To, yeah, yeah, yeah it's gonna definitely. Be, <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. But you're saying there that you're getting in touch with other bands, but like you're also getting in touch with sort of 
more creators like yourself because obviously you've done a Zoom writing class. Yeah. So where did the idea come for that? Yeah, so like... That's an odd I, one, like. <laughs> yeah, like I think a lot of bands have been doing the the live streams and I, I was doing those for a while. Yeah. But I felt really like a real disconnect because, you know, I, I wasn't... It's strange. I, it's, it's really strange. Like there was mm. a connection with the audience, but there wasn't at the same time. So I wanted yeah. to do something that was actually going to be not saying that these live streams aren't beneficial because they certainly are yeah but i think that there's different ways that can you know that that i can approach my audience so we did the, the zoom writing class um as a way to like genuinely talk to my audience um and it was really good like there's folk in it there's there's two i've got like this it's quite strange quite bizarre i don't know how it's happened i have like a little like fan group in america like i don't know where these girls came from they yeah. just they're there um but yeah they were in it and then i got friends that again ben who's the singer from voodoo bandits he was in it um who's like from the isle of man and there was like girls from like down south and you know there was a girl from germany in it and it's like it's it's crazy you know all these people in a zoom call that have yeah. never met and they're just yeah. listening to me talk shit <laughs> 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 and it was it was a really nice moment just coming off of that call and being like oh my god do you know what i mean like there's yeah. there was a group I think it was maybe about 15 people there across the globe in a zoom meeting and me just chatting about how i write songs and it was a really self gratifying moment as an artist yeah. it was like oh yeah fucker like i've actually done something do you know what i mean and it's things like that for me amongst the madness <laughs> yeah amongst the madness <laughs> it was one of those like oh my god kind of moments like i think i'm gonna remember that for you know quite some time yeah so yeah i think you're the first person i've seen do that like i don't see anyone like come up with anything that original during this situation and i think that's that's brilliant as well because people might start branching off from that now and yeah. doing similar things if not the exact same thing as you so i mean yeah. there we go amy lou content creator content creator <laughs> amy lou <laughs> yeah, have, your, have your virtual gigs but i'll be on a zoom call hey, like, uh, <laughs> put amy listen, in the top <laughs> listen i've been trying I've, I've honestly been thinking about doing like something like that because uh, yeah i was thinking about doing it um because like you can i think it's probably it's maybe something like it's maybe a bit different from like yeah doing like a live stream so you mm -hmm. know if you've maybe got like a group of like 20 folk and you're doing everybody just mutes and you know plug yeah. your interface your laptop is i think that's the future <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. that's that's yeah. what we're looking at yeah. it could be a big change in the next year you, you just you don't know what's going to happen eh? no that's crazy so uh you've managed to bring out another sort of original bit of content for like you're saying local bands um like i've not seen anyone go like this extra with anything um you oh. brought out the everything up till now yeah um, i thought that was like really original for obviously a, a band and an artist like this got the platform that you do but like compare it to somebody like like the blossoms like Mm -hmm. It's something you'd expect them to bring out, like. Yeah. So where did the? It's a really good idea. Where did the idea for that come from? Was it sort of these bigger bands, or what was it? Yeah, yeah. Like I've always wanted to do like a a compilation with like a run along kind of like zine, like a run along literature, because I think it it comes back to. It sounds a bit. I sound a bit self obsessed here, but. No, I wouldn't say that. Like, I think especially my writing, within my songwriting, it, it comes back to the writing behind it. So I really wanted to do something like a run-along literature to go to go with it. And mm. in my head, like, when I was, like, typing it up, I was, like, I was thinking, I was, like, have I really got the platform to be doing this? Because I was thinking, I was, like, this is a bigger band thing. This isn't, you know, me as an artist thing. You know, again, I'm in that local band category. And I kind of went, do you know what i'm gonna do it anyway so yeah <laughs> like and it was really cool and it, it was super cheap to do it you know it, it took a lot of time um again it was a lot of like laptop throwing stress yeah. 
but yeah. you know it, it was really effective and it was kind of like a, a natural full circle because we were it was Chloe again one of my managers she was like burning all the discs and then she was sending them to me to like do the because we were doing prints with them as well so I was like hand signing prints and then doing mm -hmm. the zines you know it was it was a very super DIY do you know what I mean but it was really cool yeah, absolutely. It's, it's again, it's it's finding, you know, everybody's got so much free time now. So it's yeah. finding things to, to fill that time exactly. with. Exactly. I know the struggle. <laughs> ah, Ken. <laughs> Ken. Right, so uh, on to the next thing. Um, on to the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously about everything that's going on just now, um, Lots of gigs and festivals being cancelled. Mm -hmm. um, possibly one of your biggest gigs to date being cancelled. Would you say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's oh. gonna be Amy's year. Top, oh. top, top ten charts. <laughs> Honestly, I, literally, yeah. It's it's. Do you know what? It was it was really upsetting. Like, see, when I the day that we got, I got the email for like Kendall calling. It was like, oh my god, like. Because, like, the start of the year, like, kind of, like, everything, like, coming up to 2020, I was really making quite big kind of strides. So, like, the end of last year, I got, like, my team finalised, you know. Um, we were, like, booking tours. We got Kendo confirmed. We had other festivals come through. And then this happened. The Rona. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Rona. Miss Rona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kind of took it all away, but do you know what? It's it's been right rescheduled. Do you know what I mean? So it, it is gonna happen, and I think it happens for a reason, whether mm. good or bad. You know, like next, it's just basically been put the plans of twenty twenty yeah into twenty twenty one. Yeah, like I mean, for everything. Look at next year, like hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll be a mad one. Like, yeah, it'll be 20, one to remember. 2021 is going to be the, the gaff. It's going to be the best gaff. Like, we hope so. Eh? Gaff. 2021 is just a gaff. Like a as year long as there's gaff. not a second peak, <laughs> then we'll be waiting until 2022. Yeah. Like, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to say that, by the way. <laughs> oh, Denny, Denny, Denny. Yeah, so obviously, you have been coming up with stuff in lockdown and everything. Have you got any like records that you think are coming out that will interest folk? Yeah, so Substation, which is like a studio in in Recife, next to Dunfermline, they're doing like a they're, they're doing like a compilation record. So it's like raising money for uh, for Women's Aid and like Frontline Fife, mm. and they're doing like this really there's a really good lineup on it. So it's got like um Jesus and the Mary Chains done a track for it, Dove. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he's done some of them for it and then there's lots of like other like Scottish bands a lot of Scottish bands who are like coming through the 80s or have got tracks on it I'll not say just in case Michael Brennan shouts at me for a <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah it's a really really cool kind of lineup and for it we um, I, I was between a couple of different songs but um, I've, I've been doing this kind of reimagined thing that a lot of artists are doing yeah. kind of the isolation thing I kind of took it like a step further and I've been like genre bending like all my singles that are already out and um I re-recorded Fiat 500 like the only way I can explain it is well this is what my friend says it sounds like the sound says it sounds like the Tarzan soundtrack <laughs> they're like Phil Collins like harmonies like a Disney yeah. like Tarzan kind of thing and um, yeah. that makes it sound pish it's not but it's a <laughs> bop but yeah um, so that's coming out and then we've been like remotely recording kind of demos but a couple of them are like because obviously Scott as I say Scott's basically the Amy Lou producer <laughs> so he, he's already had like the tracks on the singles so we're like do you know what these actually sound quite class do you know what I mean so it's just me and Scott you know playing about with them and we're like we're we're in the process of potentially releasing one of them as a single um so we've not got an album just yet nah, got an album. <laughs> that, like, that's next year Cam. <laughs> damn it but now we're, 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 we're doing like a lot of kind of recording and just content 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 
content. That's <laughs> all it can be, do you know what I mean? I mean, that's all you really can do just now, though, yeah. It's like, there's nothing else to sort of plug. It's just like, I'm still here. Please remember me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, 100%. I think there's a lot of... I, I was speaking to... Um, I, I don't know if you know... Do you know Brom Bear? It's a yeah, band from uh, Glasgow. Yeah, yeah. Matt Heckman. Yeah, I was on a Zoom call with him last night. And I think there's so many bands at the moment who had just finished recording something. Just oh, it them. seems like that, by the way. Who, like a lot of bands. Yeah, loads of people are really uneasy about releasing. They kind of, I know lots of like, lots of my friends are like holding on to singles. Like I, I've got, I've got music that I'm holding on to that I don't want to release right now because it, it's a really, it's a really weird environment. Just right because, time. But- yeah, because I, the only way that I, I can explain it is because you, you've got so many of these, like, scary things that are happening, like, mm. or, like, big topics. So, for example, like, the Black Lives Matter, like, the Black Lives Matter movement and things like that, these are, like, cropping up, like, big, powerful conversations are popping up. And, like, Duffy, you'll know yourself and being about these releases, they take months to prepare. Yeah. And you're finding that lots of these act, acts are, like, pushing albums the same time that we are pushing silence in the industry. Yeah. yeah very it's awkward. A, it's a tough call. Definitely. It's very awkward. And I think a lot of people are, like I, I myself, like I was doing another um, run of everything up till now. And I felt very guilty for like pushing it whilst these, these things were going on in the world. So it's, yeah. I think that's maybe why a lot of people are concerned about releasing because yeah. there's there's much more important things that we should be highlighting yeah, yeah. than pushing on a single do you know what exactly. I mean yeah now nah, listen I think we've gone over everything that we really want to talk about with you it's been a pleasure having you on Amy um, we'll, look, we'll look forward to trying getting you on when times do go back to normal hopefully good times <laughs> <laughs> good times will be had <laughs> nah. Thanks for everyone that's listened up to this point and uh, we really, really appreciate the support you've been giving us for the podcast recently. So thank yeah. you very much, Amy. Thank, thank you for coming on, Amy, yeah. No bother at all. No bother thank at all, Troops. Cheers. Nice one. Cheers.